Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, artist and Bible journaler here, and I wanted to share with you a little page that I created in my Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook. Uh, I've had this hymn stuck in my head, and I have created a sketch for it full size and column size. And I'm using the verse, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So there are sketches for both the full size and the column size in the description for you if you'd like to use those sketches and trace them into your Bible. And I practiced it, of course, in my workbook so that I kind of knew what colors that I was going to use and what strength that I wanted to use them in because I learned a lot from doing that first one. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to create that Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook is so you'd have a place to practice. Now, something that I don't know if I've mentioned very often with uh, <laughs> watercoloring in your Bible is that keeping the leading edge wet will help you to get a smooth blend from one area to another. So that edge on the left hand side is what I'm calling the leading edge. And I'm trying to work quickly enough that I don't get a hard edge along there. Sometimes you can use a baby wipe to soften that out or use a brush and try to scrub some of it out. But if you wait too long, you're going to get a hard edge there. So in general, I try to have some sort of a plan for what I'm going to do with the color, which is, of course, where the practicing comes in especially if I'm doing, this is just a, a brown gray combination, but if I'm doing something that is a rainbow combination, I want to know how to go across the page and get those blends to work without creating problems for myself along the way. So I finished my color, wanted to have sort of a dingy color on the outside because the place where I am standing on the firm foundation of the rock is where I want all the color to be. So I'm going to use more of a yellowish brown, this is a yellow ochre color, for that rock. I want it to be brighter and happier, and I want to create some shadows so that it starts to look dimensional. And I've left some of that brown color in my palette for when I get to that stage. I'm, of course, putting on yellow shoes, because yellow is my color. You may have noticed that by seeing me do lots of things in yellow on this channel. So I'm leaving a highlight on the top of each one of the, the shoes so that they have a little bit of dimension on them. And then I'll add some brown, or brown, add some blue, I cannot even speak today, into the pants. And now I'm going to start adding some brown into the shadows. And as I put some darker color around that rock, it starts to pop out and starts to look like like it's it's dimensional, it's, it's lifted up higher than the ground underneath. And that's what I was looking for, was to put emphasis on that. And then I'm softening out those edges, again, trying to do it while it's wet, so that I don't end up with hard edges there. I'm going to iron it, so I put a piece of just basically computer paper over top and below it, so that I can iron it. And if I do it while it's wet, which is what I did, it lightens the color underneath because some of that color comes off on the piece of paper. So if you get too much color on there and you don't feel like dabbing it off, you can just do your ironing quickly and it will remove some of it. It just won't remove it consistently. So if you want to be real careful with how you remove it, you may want to do that manually. To add some shadows onto the, the picture, I'm adding color on the bottom side of each of the shoes so that it looks like there's light coming from the top. So when I put color down below them, the more intense I put the shadow color, the more intense the dimension. Notice how that just popped as soon as I put those strokes of that really dark brown color in there. And that's a matter of using heavier pigment, less water in general. Once it was all dry, I could go back in and add some work in pen. And I'm adding some stippling and then a few areas where I'm adding a little tiny circle. So it's adding some texture to that rock to make sure it feels like a rock rather than a 
a blob of something that I'm standing on, so it's an actual rock. And then I used a watercolor pencil to add shoestrings. You could add a, a, them with a regular color pencil as well. But here I had the watercolor pencils out, and I thought, oh, I can add some shading onto the shoes. So I took a brownish color and added some shading. Again, on the bottom side of the shoes, if you're looking from the top down, because that way I'm going to be able to blend in that color from the yellow down into the brown. And then, of course, at the bottom, I put the last part of the song lyrics on there. This song was played at our business meeting. Yes, we had a business council meeting for our church uh, with the whole church. And they played that song and they said, you know, this is God's church and we are standing on his foundation. And that song has just been bouncing around in my head ever since. All right. I will see you guys again next week. Have a blessed one. God loves you very much. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.